Hey, are you concerned about protecting that brand new pretty sled that you just got? Here's the solution. Use SledSyn24 for a 15% off discount code on some Backwoods Bumpers, the industry leader in performance protection. Let's in listeners, welcome back to the next episode. Appreciate you guys tuning in regardless of what platform you are on. Uh, we are back at Heyday, so disregard some of the background noise. And uh, as always, we've got uh, a ton of companies supporting us this season with a bunch of discounts. So those are all in the description. Um, a lot of them are in, in line with you, Polaris and Climb and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So Good work. Um, uh so be sure to check that out and uh yeah let's just jump right into this so we've got kobe uh one of our team riders back on for this episode and super special guest we've got matt Ince on this episode with Heck us yeah. yeah thanks guys awesome to be here with you <laughs> we feel the same matt super we, cool to have you yeah we we appreciate it um so matt let's uh boy what should we start with uh, all the way from the very beginning <laughs> Yeah, I'd yeah. say just tell the people I, who you are. Yeah, so give, who you yeah, are give, 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 us, a give a little background, where you're from. Okay, you bet. A little uh, introduction. What do you do? Yeah, Matt Ince. I live in South Fork, Colorado. My family and I have a snowmobiling business, Mountain Skills, where the primary thing we do is work on instructional riding with people, no matter what level, but it's all mountain off-trail riding and avalanche safety courses. That's a really big thing that's a cool that was one. kind of one of the main things when we started that we wanted to make sure we focus on uh, as things have grown and progressed over the years we've got lodging where uh, most of our customers will come and stay with us and my wife and daughters take care of the meals for them and and the that's, entertainment as oh well man, that's um, you can killer. imagine nine and nine and eleven year old <laughs> oh yeah uh, one of them has like a joke routine oh yeah he likes to, to tell jokes <laughs> oh so. there you go it's, it's pretty funny. Like, it works out perfect. Like, repeat customers. Like the next year they come back, she's got red hair. So naturally we've always called her red. Okay. And so that's what everybody knows her as. And they're like, Hey red, got a new joke for you. <laughs> and she just got she a new lights joke. up and, yeah. and you know, if it's good enough, then it goes into her routine. It there goes you go. into the routine. <laughs> I so, love that. She's so the, the critic. Yeah. So the lodging part has been really yeah. cool aspect to our business. And then yeah. we've also got a retail store, online store. What's that retail store? Mountain Skills. Nice. Mountain Skills. Online. What are you guys selling on that store? Lots and lots of climb gear and then some parts, accessories. Sweet. Try to try to have what people need, a lot of avalanche safety related yeah. items, things like that. Sure. Sure. Yeah. What are you uh, what are you doing in the summertime when you're not running the clinics through the winter? Yeah, great question. Um, unfortunately I don't just I'm not just on vacation. Uh, <laughs> okay. So we've been operating a guided side-by-side -side business for I think this is the eighth summer okay. with that okay. th that we've had that a lot of the same areas that we snowmobile yeah we've just got awesome mountains around and and it's it's really cool and last winter we, we brought in Justin Cowett to okay. help me every day on the snow and he's pretty well taken over the tour is part of, of that. So he's okay. taking people okay. out in the summer. And while he's doing that, I'm, uh, I've got an excavation business nice. as well. So I'm, I'm playing in the Man, you've got playing your in the day. Yeah, hands and all kinds of hot <laughs> I wouldn't know how to do it any other way. Yeah. That's good for you. Good for yeah, you. Like, well, to, like to work and, and get on the dirt bike whenever we can. Yeah. Which yeah. is okay. not enough. But, yeah. Never uh, is. Yeah. Are you a, are you an avid hunter too? Or I, I would like to be, but okay. I just really haven't made the time to, sure. to do that yet. Okay. Ten so gotcha. Hopefully one of these days. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Um, let's let's uh, let's go a little bit of history. So how were you how were you first ever exposed into this crazy thing we call snowmobiling? How'd you get exposed to it? From my family, from from day one, back in the late sixties and early seventies, my grandpa and his brother in law had a snowmobile dealership in our area mm. so as a kid we always had snowmobiles around we're talking snowmobiles from the 70s like yeah. bogey yeah. wheel rear suspension <laughs> oh, yeah. steel skis leaf springs for, yeah. for, oh, yeah. you know for on yeah. the skis for suspension right. and, and Good it didn't stuff. matter we'd ride them around in the fields and just always loved it as i got older my dad would take me to the mountains every now and then and once i 
was able to afford my own snowmobile, go get a loan for one. I bought one, and that's all I wanted to do since then okay. is ride snowmobiles. So sure, everything yeah. in my life revolved around figuring out a way to ride snowmobiles as much as possible. And got to a point where, like, I've always been a competitive person where mm-hmm. I want to do the best that I can and, you know, try to try to be better than the guys that I'm riding with or yeah. whatever that looked like and just really enjoyed it. And a major influence from, like, the old Slednecks videos. Yep, yep. Um, that's where a lot of it started in, in that genre, that kind of stuff. And then got an opportunity to ride with... Dan Gardner and Fatty, some of the guys from Boondockers, mm-hmm. uh, mostly to show them an area, but that translated to being invited out to ride with them yeah. and kind of went from there and then made lots of cool connections and relationships in the snowmobile industry that really started from that. Okay. And here we are. Yeah, sure. So at, at what point, what was the influence behind the idea of like, oh, I want to I want to start Mountain Skills? Like, how did how was that birthed? Well, at the time, I, I was working for a potato farm, which was awesome. I had been doing that for a long time. Really enjoyed that, and we worked our butts off like nine months of the year, and then in the winter got some vacation and got to ride a lot. And it just kind of turned into most of the time riding. I was helping people, and I was like, gosh, it would be really cool to just – ride snowmobiles with people and, and, you know, help them out with stuff here and there. Uh, was familiar with what Chris Barant was doing at that time and, and Dan Adams, what they were doing. And I wanted to be unique, wanted to do something a little bit different, but I didn't, didn't really know what that was. And then actually what flipped the switch or turned the light bulb on, whatever mm-hmm. that you want to call that, uh, was was involved in an avalanche out in, in Utah. And it, it set, sent me down a path of pursuing more education for myself, but also wanting to, I didn't know I was going to be an educator at that time, but I just wanted to spread awareness to people of, man, stuff can happen and make sure you're with the right people. Yeah. I was with a good crew of people that saved my life that day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that just, a lot of that light bulb went off and and that's when it's like, okay, let's go forward with our business. We want to take people riding. We want to help them on an instructional level and have a lot of fun, but we need to focus on the safety side mm-hmm. of things as well. Yeah, sure. So that That's kind of what pushed it. The next year we started our business and the the goal at that time was you know maybe maybe we'll do well enough that it'll help cover some of our expenses to ride mm-hmm. snowmobiles sure, sure yeah and now it's, <laughs> you know the the business is putting food on the table for our family there you so go this crazy is crazy how it's all worked out into what number of season is this how long have this you been going? is so that was in we started things out in like the fall of 2012. Okay. So we're on like year 12. Okay. Into year 12. Dang. Nice. Yeah. Congrats. Nice. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Um, can you speak a little bit on um, like the future of that? Like what what's kind of your ideas or Man, which direction are you headed? Or? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. It It's crazy. This things evolve and grow and build. Like it still feels like it's in the early stages. Mm-hmm. Like looking back, it's like, man, that's been quite a while <laughs> yeah, for something sure. to be sustained and, and just continues to grow every year. And a lot of that's due to just having great people around us yeah. and customers are the biggest thing that, that drive that. Uh, as far as moving forward, I'd say the r- really m- my goal, what I'm seeing right now is kind of continue growing what our, our retail and online store and that, but just maintain it with our lodge and, staying busy i love i I wish winter was 12 months because i could spend (laughs) every day all year on the snow with people yeah i love doing that so we just just keep that going sure sure can you talk a little bit about like the accommodations of the lodge like what's your setup look like yeah so it's full service it's a nice modern house it's like a big six bedroom house so got fully fully set up for people they're not not roughing it by (laughs) by any stretch we've got a combination of like single bed rooms and then some rooms will have have a couple of beds in them so there's some variety on that which offers kind of variety in, in price point mm-hmm. um, 
people eat a lot, so groceries cost a lot, yes, a lot they of money. Do. So, yep, uh, sure. But it, it's cool. Hey, what's up, guys? I want to take a quick second to introduce another one of this year's sponsors. We have RSI. So the handlebar setup on your sled is arguably probably one of the most important components on your whole setup. So definitely check out their site. They've got a ton of different products. And use SledZen24 at checkout for a discount. What I didn't understand with that is how much I would enjoy the time hanging out with everybody off of the snow. Yeah. When we're on the Hearing snow, the like that's and fun stuff. and and that. Yeah. But when we get the when we get off the snow, we get to talk about stuff aside from snowmobiling. We yeah. still talk a lot about snowmobiling while we're in there, also. But you learn more about them and their family, and it's just like heightened the the relationships that we have with our customers. And so many of them, you know, they're they're, they're more than clients; they're friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so speak. Um, which direction do you want to go with this from here? Uh, you, you can, haven't said much. You can direct it. You can direct <laughs> it. I'm just, I'll bounce questions off of it. Yeah. Well, so I have like a variety of topics to go through. Um, so a couple things I do, you know, with like the progression of, of your business and stuff, I just want to mention that I've heard from multiple people, um, Dustin Pancary and Smasher and a couple of people, um, how awesome and amazing you and your family your family unit is um that's just been i just want to bring it up because it, that thread has i've heard that several times um and so you kind of you know spoke a little bit about your wife but you know how much of of your whole entire business is that the importance of that support system because um, it sounds like your kids are really involved in it as well and touch on that too because as you're i'm sure you're aware you know there's a lot of snowmobile riders out there that have a significant partner yeah. that maybe don't like the snowmobiling or aren't into it or you know have a negative you know because it's expensive and all right. that kind of stuff so if you don't mind like kind of touch on the impact that that's had and just because i've heard yeah, so much of that about you definitely and and that's i mean to each their own like everybody does things their their own way and that's one thing that once we decided to go this route from the very beginning my wife was always extremely supportive like she's the one that like, like I kind of would joke and I'm like what do you think about this mountain skills with with Matt and it's and, and you know kind of just expecting a little bit of a chuckle type of thing and she's like yeah you need to do it yeah like, go for it mm -hmm. so she's always been a hundred percent supportive behind me I think one of the things that causes a lot of conflict you see people and maybe their significant other thinks they're doing like I don't know it's a weird dynamic they yeah. think they're doing it to get away or they don't understand like the like the joy and happiness whatever it is that a person gets that from they, mm -hmm. they should pursue it and so she yeah. has always seen what this stuff means to me and encouraged me to go for it and, and been behind it but also like right there by my side at going to snowshows she's come to Hades with me most years and once we had kids it's like well they're they're going with us yep. um, one of our daughters was born right around a snow show and she was at the snow show when she was like a week old <laughs> like that's just that that's our life yeah and, and you're like we gotta go they, we're going no matter it's what not us changing our life just for them but like adapting so they're with us and actually this is the first year my daughters are here with me yeah. at heydays and it's been that's super cool. awesome but yeah. so they've always been involved and it, it makes it a lot easier for me because all of this stuff is a, it's a, all a big commitment. Yeah. And yep. to be able to spend that time together with them, that's that's awesome. Mm -hmm. it, it's hard when you, you're on the road and you're away from uh -huh. them. That, yeah. that, that can be really tough. So yes. um, when, when we do get to be together and they're a huge part of what our, what our full operation mm -hmm. is, yeah. uh, just... It's the way it is. It's the way That's we the way cool. we want it yeah. to be, and we're yeah. you know, life. Everything is chapters, and we're you know we're we're writing our own yeah. as we go. There's not following anything. Just yeah, doing it our way. Love that. Love that. Um, thank you for sharing. On yeah. that. Is your family just, like riding? Yeah, they do. Um, unfortunately, with things busy, they don't get to ride near as much as they would like to. Sure. But I'm telling you when we get those those family days it it's not the you know the the gnarliest thing but watching them and just being out there with them puts a whole different kind uh -huh. of smile on the face and like satisfaction yeah. uh, I, I like to just follow them around yeah and
and it's yep. it's cool. Yeah, yeah, no, that's pretty neat. Um, speak a little bit about like um, like your clientele with Mountain Skills. So like, what's like the demographic of the people that are coming to learn and work with you? The big variety. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, from all over the country. Yeah, and, all yeah. all over the country. We've had people come in from Europe and okay. and a fair amount of clients from Canada, and it's it's people that everything I mean, we have some people that this is their first time on a snowmobile mm-hmm. try to make sure they understand what they're getting into yeah. with, you know, this is what we're going <laughs> to try doing. to this understand what we're be teaching you yeah. um it, it's it's not you know we're not going to go sightseeing or you know it's not a trail ride like it's involved you're going to learn how to ride this snowmobile um that to i mean we've got some return clients that are badass like yeah. high level riders that we've worked with year after year after year and it's really fun they're still initially they came to us to learn and now they're they continue to come out like because they want to continue to be pushed so mm-hmm. when we get the chance to push you know the their personal comfort and level that that's really fun and just everything in between uh, the avalanche courses are a completely separate separate thing there and then something that's been really fun to be a part of and really cool how it's grown over the years is we, we work with a lot of women mm-hmm. uh, a lot of we do ladies multiple ladies clinics a year and the last couple of years we, we've gotten to where we're doing uh, advanced ladies clinics nice. and these women rip ride it's <laughs> it's uh it's a pretty interesting environment that advanced ladies clinic yeah um they might not consider it fun uh for part of the time it's it's a it's intense. Yeah. Like we're, we're out there to, to really push them. And because, because we believe in them, that's the biggest yeah. thing. Um, it's cause we, we see what they're capable of and we know how far we can push people. And, yeah. and, uh, it's, so it, it, it's pretty cool to see that aspect as yeah. well. Yeah. And that's awesome. Um, so switching, uh, a little bit, I want to speak, um, cause, uh, before Christmas, we went to climb and did a tour with Dustin and did yep. some podcasts with him stuff. And then we had uh, Dan Adams on yesterday. So I want to touch on your involvement with uh, Avalanche Alliance um, and then kind of dissect, you know, obviously that stuff is super important to you. Yeah. Um, so talk a little bit about the overall mission of Avalanche Alliance and what your direct involvement is with that. It goes back to that sharing awareness, spreading awareness, helping people understand the importance of the education if, if you're going to ride in the mountains because there's a lot of real dangers out there and with with some information you can just setting yourself up for success mm-hmm. and it's it's been an honor to travel with those guys and really kind of sharing some of our personal experiences and stories because that's that's what got Dan and I into what yeah what we're, yep. we're doing and, yep. and Dustin has been motivated by experiences as well Mm -hmm. and has done a lot so we've always had a good dynamic with us together so it it works well and we've kind of been able to put that together how we want in the name of encouraging people to get on snow training yeah you know we travel isn't do a presentation maybe give them some new information something Mm -hmm. like that but i mean realistically you can't teach a class in a couple hours yeah right you can share some information which is great and we always would encourage people to do that but the the main goal go out and and get the on snow training don't care if it's with me with you know there's lots of great providers and we really try to promote everybody yeah with that and i think that's kind of unique yeah there's not a lot of people out there that go promote other people yeah yeah so that's been pretty yep. cool and then the other aspect with the avalanche alliance is all of the fundraising like it's mind-boggling how much money the snowmobiling community has put in and raised over the last few years that goes back into the snowmobiling community helping people get scholarships to attend avalanche courses or the professional level courses the forecasting things like that so it's it's really cool what what that has turned into and sure. what it is. Yeah. So you about how many? Because the three of you traveled around quite a bit to a lot of different dealers and stuff. About the how last, many did you go through? Gosh, the last few <laughs> years. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. We're, we're, we've been on the road a lot, and probably are you doing more this 12 year? Twelve to fifteen of those per year. Uh, maybe even one. It might have been even close to twenty one year. Okay. Um, we're a smaller scale this year. Okay. Uh, yeah. We, we have some ideas, some some stuff that we want to incorporate to continue building the program. It's one of those, we're, you know, we're all pretty 
driven people and have high yeah. expectations yeah. for stuff. And the same thing with, with what we're doing with that presentation. We want to continue to evolve it and make it better and use that as an avenue to, to keep people engaged and involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, I love what you guys are doing with that. I, I have a question um, and I asked, I asked Dan this yesterday too, and I'm, I'm anticipating you to have a pretty similar reaction. Um, but I just get this a lot. Um, you know, we've got some eyes and some attention and, you know, talk to quite a few people through this podcast and stuff. Um, and this, this comes up more often than I would like it to. Um, and, and so I want, want your reaction to speak to the, the topic of, you know, you've got a lot of people that'll go spend $20,000 on a brand new sled, you know, two grand, 2,500, whatever for head to toe climb gear, whatever it is. Um, and then hold back on an Abbey bag, a beacon, a probe, and you know, a shovel, those important things that potentially could save your life or somebody else's. Uh, and it just, I was telling Dan this, it was like, it's such a weird disconnect for me. Like, I don't understand how you, th like things are relative, whatever, but I don't understand that thought process, like how you disconnect that. Like you're gonna go choose to buy all this and then hold back on something like this that has such a high value of importance. Um, what's your <laughs> I, reaction I, to that thought? My my personal like feeling on it is I want to just like come on yeah what are you thinking but yeah. the honestly from being around so many people you don't know what you don't know yep. a lot of people That's don't good, know any different yep. I, I didn't and unfortunately it's a it's a sad thing but so many people in our industry they're not pursuing it or don't really take it serious until there's a close call or a tragedy. Mm. And that mm. sucks. Yeah. That's how it is. And that's part of us trying to get out ahead of that with mm -hmm. the Avalanche Alliance and, and other people are doing things as well, trying to get ahead of that curve. But last year there was a fatality down in our area, a place that 90% of the people that ride there don't have Abbey gear because they say, well, it, it doesn't have never you. never slides here you and know. you know what knowing different like well it, it can it's like certain conditions but last year there was a weird wind event and that one of the local guys hill that he rides every time he goes out there slid on him that day they nobody had the gear we found his body a couple Shoot. days later mm -hmm. like that smacked that community upside the head that they do need stuff it can happen you know maybe it's less likely but it sucks that, it takes that level of fear to it does yeah and it to it, wake it's people really up. sad it's like that was that was heartbreaking yeah. being mm -hmm. involved in that whole process yeah. and you know there's countless stories I was say, similar it, and it still happens every that. year yeah and yeah. and i'm unfortunate i don't know what it is about us that's how we're wired <laughs> that we need something that like really pushes us yeah. to to pursue that so that went off a little bit off to the you're side good. there no, but no, you're good. not yeah. not knowing yeah you don't know yeah. what you don't know it's yeah. even same thing with our courses when people take the course because a, a level one is a commitment ours is, it's three days and it, it's a lot of fun but it's a lot of work as well but when they're done most people they say i i i'm embarrassed that i waited so long to take this course i should have done this years ago yeah. sure yeah didn't realize that they, did, they didn't know so much necessarily. They didn't realize how much information they were going to get or yeah. even even like how enjoyable, like how, like, it's fun. Yeah. The, the courses are fun. We're, we're snowmobiling a lot. We're putting the stuff to use while we're riding to try to make it relevant. So when they leave, it's not just a, oh, yeah, that was cool. You know, we want it to be like where they continue to stay engaged with it yeah, from sure. then on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, changing the topic again, I think this might be a really, really good opportunity for you to get uh, an answer. <laughs> uh, so I, I snow checked um, a 155 uh, Chaos Boost and a 146 9R. Sweet. But on my 155, I chose to go with the 275 instead of the 325. And my re my reasoning for that was because you know we're in Eastern Oregon, okay. And so the amount of days that we have like super, super deep, epic is not very common yep. and i my uh i have a 21 uh axis 850 that i've got that same track on and i really like it and it works for me um but kobe went with uh the same sled but it's a, a 325 
and so he was a little bit hesitant and kind of you know you can ask questions and you see different things on the internet and whatnot and you're probably one of the best to ask this direct question to so he was kind of concerned um I'll, I'll just let you take it kobe about the 50 mile an hour yeah we were just I, you know what i mean just a general concern something that immediately pops up um and like i know you know a lot of people are like oh well if you don't ride the mountain you don't need it and it's like okay well i understand that but unfortunately to get to mountain there's a trail to get yep. there you know a lot of times yes i there's some mountains you know that we're out these talking to these guys you know a lot of wyoming sounds like there's places where you can just unload five minutes and you're on the mountain but where we're from i mean we've got to drive yeah, we, we have, have to have. drive a solid hour at least to just to get there and then from there we got to ride another i mean at least 20 minutes usually to get into some yeah. good riding so yeah. i'm like that's that's even like the short rides there's some rides where i've got 40 miles before i like get to the good riding now that's a planned trip right but i'm saying at the end of those 40 miles it's killer riding it's deep it's huge it's it's you know it's all that powder hound stuff so i'm like man i don't know if i was i guess my thought was is uh i don't i guess i don't want to kick myself in the butt for ordering the 325 since i do still ride trail or whatever fast <laughs> so my, my question then is like hey what's up guys it's tyler with sled send wanted to take a second of your guys' time and ask for your guys' support for what we're doing with the brand of Sledson. So if you guys are enjoying, you know, the podcast episodes with all the different guests, the tour videos and such, check out uh, Sledson.com. We have a variety of different merch. Every order comes with air fresheners and stickers. And like I said, we appreciate your guys' support. We need it to continue to do this. And without further ado, let's get into the video. What, what matters to you the most? Where do you want the best performance from your snowmobile? yeah you want it in the, that deep snow and that stuff Dude, that track is going to be awesome i i was blown away i got to run it on a 155 chaos boost and we got lucky and had some really good snow and, mm -hmm. and storms and, and i enough that i ordered multiple sleds with that track nice um, what, what i would say like it's not that it can't go down the trail but it's not something you'd want to ride on the trail you know as a trail sled but mountain sleds aren't that fun i guess so like what it, what is it i guess even more or less too because i i did read a little bit and i think uh polaris actually ended up commenting back on one of our i don't know i had polaris comment back on something online and they kind of explained to me they're like oh it's 55 mile an hour i think or something then a red warning comes Th up or what yeah there's a warning a warning when a sustained speed over a certain amount of time and it's it's basically to keep the track because in those conditions, it's it's going to create heat. And heat is the biggest enemy of a track other than, like, sharp objects. Yeah. <laughs> so you just don't want to get that thing hot where stuff starts coming apart. Okay, so it's for, like, a prolonged period. Yeah. So, like, what if I was, like, something, something, you know, you're messing around out in the prairie, and all of a sudden, you know, Tyler comes up next to me or something, and he, you know, and he spins me and hits me with snow clods, and I want to take yeah, off after. after him, you know, through the meadow or something and beat him to the other side well I, a part of that is well and again it's it's more of, you know playing around is that it's still more of a thing for people to be mindful of okay. it's not like your snowmobile is going to shut off and stop or you can't ride it there See, like that's it's been not, so it's that's what i was wondering like yeah it's it's a way for you to be mindful not run it sustained like hey yeah it's hot yeah. don't yeah. do that and and when you're on the trail the, the new scratchers are awesome so keep them yeah. down make sure things are cooling yeah and yeah, we have to run. We run scratchers. It's but I wouldn't want to take at. a sled with that track and, like, go hammer a bunch of hard pack snow no. all day long because, well, for one, it wouldn't be fun yeah. anyways with that setup. But, yeah. Well, I've got, uh, yeah, I, like I said, I, it's not that's not my one. I have two setups, so I'm able to run. I still have a 275, yeah. so I was thinking if I that would be a deep powder, you yeah. know, super and sweet setup. And I don't think I'm going to regret it. I'm like, how could I regret it? Yeah, it, like I said, if if you are looking for the, you know, want the best performance in that deep snow, that, that thing's going to work great for you. Yeah. 275 is an awesome all-around track. So. Yep, yep. It, it's hard because we have such good options. Mm -hmm. like that, those Some of those choices are, are really hard and hear that all the time. Well, what track should I get? Well, what track links? Well, pro or Chaos? All, all these different things. We have, it's, we're so spoiled. It's we so have funny. such good options. Yeah. That we get to choose from it What's, used to be like man 
do I get the the clicker shocks or do I get the standard yeah. shocks? You know, what color do I get? Red or do I get black and orange? And now well, it's like oh, there's so many options. So what's um, do you do you rock like a, a main like play sled and then a main guiding sled? You have two separate or what's what are like your, your go-to's? I, that's what I'm I was going to ask. Something is, different all the time. Okay, and, and all right. I I always joke that my favorite snowmobile is whatever the last one I just got off of. Okay, because yeah. I'm like this <laughs> thing is so awesome. Yeah, yeah. But I'm kind of switching it up a lot of the times depending on who the people that I'm working with are. What's what's okay. the appropriate sled for this group of people that that I'm working with? But I, I would say if I had to choose one snowmobile for every single day every single condition everything yep uh, i would choose a 9r chaos 165 with the 275 would because again all around every condition every yeah. day that, that's what i would go with. yeah that's your the deep weapon. days are still going to be good you're yeah. going to have a if, lot of yeah. power yeah yeah uh, and that's you know and good. that's riding with lots of different people and all different conditions if if I got to be selfish and was just riding selfishly yep. my favorite terrain mm-hmm. every day, then I would I would do a 165 Chaos Boost. So you're a 165 guy? I, I do. I, I like the longer track. We have a lot of variety of elevation and terrain yeah. where we're at. I like the, the Chaos for the playfulness. Sure. It's yeah. actually kind of a, like the big debate now is like 165 chaos or 155 pro which mm-hmm. which of those because I, uh, yeah. I still ride both yeah. or okay. ride them all, all the yeah. time but that's yeah. that's still the, the preference yeah. right now yeah days. i've heard that talked about well isn't your didn't your dad kind of feel that's why that way wow well, there so there's like all kinds of different and it's crazy that there's this much like feedback I mean, the all riders feel it like how much difference there is between those two chassis yeah i had a uh, 800 155 pro turboed and i remember having that and it was always like yeah it would come up you know what i mean but it was always like man i remembered it would just blow all the 163s out of the water you know the naturally aspirated 163s well, as a 155 and then getting the go into the chaos now now the 155 chaos it's hard to even keep this thing you know it's yeah. always it's you can't hill climb with them because they're they're back flipping you want you know a wild I mean? ride get on a 155 chaos boost that's yeah. that's what it is, that's what it we is, got that's what we so much fun in a little less gnarly terrain yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's but, what we got and then yeah. i'm like i'm like i'm just hoping that i'm not gonna kick myself when it's four feet deep and we're trying it's, to make it up the hills and i'm over here just to paddling we're so lucky with the options that we have what yep. we get to choose from they're it's they're crazy. all awesome and there are so many factors again wh- where do you want the biggest advantage or the most fun yeah uh, that should be what people use to choose shouldn't yep. be because i like setup x or you like use you know, the this yep, use here. the like, tool that's best yeah, you, for the job yep. and, and what you really want the best where you want it to work the best right for sure well, so Matt, I want to respect your time. I told you we kind of keep them shorter. I mean, I, we could we could keep you here for the next three hours, but I want to respect your time. Kobe, do you have any last parting questions that you want to ask Matt? I don't think so. That was pretty good. Pretty yeah. good episode. Okay. Yeah. Well, Matt, I want to extend uh, a large amount of gratitude. I've heard a ton about you, and it's just been awesome to finally get to meet you, and, and I'm super grateful that you took the time to, to jump on the show. So I appreciate it a ton. Um, but what we something special two things um, at the end of every single episode we have our guests ask the listeners and viewers a specific question that you would like some answers on or some feedback and so it can be avalanche stuff it could be stuff on the new sleds coming out it can be clinic stuff um, it can be whatever comes to come to mind so putting you on the spot okay. uh, something that you would like to ask the listeners and viewers and and we cut the clip and use it for reels and tiktok and stuff like that but. okay awesome ah man that is a, that's <laughs> yeah. a tough one there's it's so, a on the so, spotter so many yeah. things come to mind i i, I want to know this Maybe this is a little different, but I want to know what you guys are going to do to help preserve our riding. Like, what are you going to do to assure that we get to keep riding? We get to keep having badass events like Heydays, podcasts like this, where we yeah. get to talk about this. 
we don't have places to ride, then we don't have any opportunities. So that, that's what I want to know. There's lots that's of ways to get one. involved. So. That's a really, really good one. I don't think that, that one's ever been asked. I don't think it's been a question. Not um, that I can and, recall. And that, I bring that up. I just had a really good conversation with a couple from Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. They were looking at some of the climb insulated gear. And I was like, I, you know, I can't really answer that many questions about it, but I'd like to talk to you about, because they, they wear it. And they're, you know, they're trail riders and, and that, and it led to these different topics that we talked about in the big one. They're, they're really worried about their access to land um, because so much of it's private land and, and needing people to respect that and even just getting the permission. Like, man, you don't realize what a big deal that is, you know, if half the trails in Wisconsin got closed, yeah. or, you know, something like that, just as an yeah. example. So that. Yeah. yeah, we just had a girl on here and she's from Maine over there on Massachusetts. The, Massachusetts on the east side. And that's what she was saying. She says all of our writing is private. It's landowner. Yeah. See, we're and I'm like, what? completely different. We're, everything is public. It's all I national know. forest. Like we have certain restrictions and, and About stuff no like that. About no-go zones and stuff. Yeah, and, and, and wilderness and that. And it's, it's, it's just we're involved weird. there, but you don't realize on the big scheme, like other places, just yeah. What what a sensitive subject it, it really is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, when you cool. can get some big different environmentalist groups in, entered, and there's there's a lot of factors. Yeah, it's so not good. Uh, why don't we just flip that on you, and why don't you answer that question? Okay. Some some of the things that maybe you're working on or involved yeah. in. Yep, you bet. So we're always involved with our state snowmobile association as well as, and it's different in every state, but clubs, I know clubs are a huge deal out yeah, here. It's, yeah, yeah. it's it's really awesome how involved people are with their clubs. In the West, it's a little different. Unfortunately, there's not the involvement with clubs that there is in, in the Midwest or like the Northeast, places like that. But um, we, we support, and we're a member of seven or eight different clubs throughout Colorado, and we try to help them with fundraising events, and we, we donate different packages for the clubs as well as for the state association stuff to raise money. They call it in Colorado, it's the right to ride foundation. Okay. Um, that, and then like blue ribbon coalition and there, there's lots of organizations out there. I'm probably not as good at this as I should be, but I try to mm -hmm. try to submit a letter or, or be involved with, with okay. that process when, when things come up and then try to, I, try to stay extremely involved locally attend meetings even throughout the state um, try to try to have a voice and, and use it so sure those are, Heck yeah those are things that Good. that we've been involved with Good. love it yeah please uh please let us know that's a really really good question we want to know your guys's answers and thoughts in the comments below um well matt let's uh let's wrap this episode up we have um two more asks from you we'll get a photo for the thumbnail but the second one is if you would do the honors to sign sign our banner for yeah, us anywhere yeah. anywhere you want that would mean a ton to us so sleds and listeners um thank you guys for tuning in on this episode and of course matt thank you for for being here appreciate it a ton yeah appreciate you guys doing this a ton the chance to get to chat with you so Heck i yeah. guess the next thing hopefully do it again one of these days but absolutely get on the snow together yeah. that, that, that'd be the ultimate goal. <laughs> yes. yeah be right for fun. the day and then do a that podcast that night or something that would be yeah yeah absolutely yeah i've never been to colorado nope for, sounds like you got some cool things going yeah. on out your way too <laughs> yep. Yep. got it all figured yeah, out awesome. yeah cool well thanks again matt we appreciate it and uh sluts and listeners we will catch you guys on the next one